math point 13 properties of triangles in your math class in geometry you learn about the different shapes you learn about different things for triangles uh, different names for the triangles we'll quickly go over them um, it's good to know and so that on the test these terminology won't stump you an acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees a uh, right angle is one that is 90 degrees obtuse angle is an angle that's greater than 90 degrees a straight angle is an angle that is a straight line so it's 180 degrees and a reflex angle is an angle that is between 120 uh, 180 and 360 but you won't see reflex angle on the SAT for angles uh, at a point if you have like a point here and you have different angles so let me give you an example if say you have like these two lines and I'll make this point bigger so that it's a point okay so you have a line here a line here and the question may ask you what is the sum of all the angles at this point so there's this angle this angle this angle and this angle like a circle adding them up because it's a circle then that would be 360 degrees vertical angles are angles that are across from each other and they are always equal two lines crossing each other then the two opposite sides they're called vertical angles they are equal to each other complementary angles are angles that uh, add up to 90 degrees and supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees and these are things that you should know some complementary supplementary and uh, vertical angles being across from each other so here are some practice questions. Here we have a A here, and actually, why don't I have you do these by yourself? Because the answers are pretty much here. So if you understand this, what's going on here, then you should be able to identify uh, angles uh, A, B, C, D, and E. So go ahead and do that, and if there's anything that are confusing, then ask, it, ask uh, the teacher. Corresponding angles are angles that form a, you can think of it as a F shape. For example, in this drawing here, you have a F that looks like this, and it's the angles that are inside the F. So I don't have an angle here, but let me flip this F around Up here here we have like a, a backwards F right? if you make this make this line longer so these are like the two parallel lines and then this is the like for the F so it's like a like a flipped F and in this flip F the angle here and here are the corresponding angles so the angles A and E are corresponding angles and these two angles are going to be, corresponding angles are going to be equal to each other. So F angle A will be equal to angle E. Alternate interior angles. Alternate means the opposite side. So alternate interior, you'll think of the letter Z. So here we have a Z shape like that and angles E and C, the angles on the inside of the Z shape, is called are called alternate interior angle. So these are E and C, and alternate interior angles are also equal to each other. We have alternate interior angles, interior being inside, like this, and like this, these two, and we have alternate exterior angles. Exterior means outside. So we have this shape here, and outside are angles that are like for example here and you can think of that as like this shape there's this uh, kind of like two two angles away from each other so there's this angle here and then there is draw it this way there's this angle here 
those are alternate inter uh, exterior angles. The interiors are inside E and C, and the exterior are outside like that. So if you flip this to the other side, then here we have that angle, and we have this angle, and these two angles are alternate exterior angles. So that's A and H, and alternate exterior angles are also equal to each other. Co-interior angles, based on the spelling, the wording of the this type of angle, interior means inside and co means together. So that means inside together. And a way to remember that is think of the letter C. Here we have a letter C. Here. And in that letter C, we have C and D on the inside. On the other side also, B and E are on the inside of this C, this backward C. So those are all co interior angles, angle C and D. And it's also E and B. And co interior angles, they add up to 180 degrees. And lastly, vertical angles, kind of mentioned that earlier, vertical angles, they form a X. So here we have an X and angles on the opposite sides of the X. So like A and C are vertical angles and vertical angles equal to each other. Maybe without remembering this, just by drawing, by looking, you kind of are able to guess how this looks like. So here you have two parallel lines, you have a line cross, and this angle and this angle, they, they look, and this angle here, they look the same, right? So that means they are, then they are the same. This angle here and this angle here, they obviously don't look the same, so they're not the same. And because, um, uh, let me use this one here. B and C are on the straight line. So these two angles are, they add up to 180 and they are supplementary angles, but they are not uh, equal. So sometimes just by looking at it, by looking at angles A and E, they, they look the same, and so they are the same. I'm gonna apply that for, for these type of questions in math. Now let's take a look at this one. In the figure, three lines intersect at point P, that's the point here, if X is 65. So whenever there's a graph and it gives you information, you should label it 65 and y is 75, what is the value of z? You're trying to find this one. And here you need to apply some of those properties we went over at the top. One is that the vertical angles, angles across from each other, are the same. So if this angle here is 75, then on the other side of the x here, this is 75. And before we also went over that a angles at a point uh, well, sorry, angles at a point that add up to 360, that's a whole circle, but angles at a, on a straight line, straight angles are 180. So here you have three angles adding up to this straight line here. So that means 65 plus 75 plus Z is going to be equal to 180. So the way that you do it is 180 minus 65 minus 75, 40. That's how much this angle here is left with. So the answer is 40. In the figure above, you have point P here lies on a D, and this is the right angle, what is the value of 3x? Sometimes question could be tricky, that it's not looking for 1x, it's looking for here, 3x. So make sure you pay attention to that detail. Here we have, a, again, a straight angle. So a straight angle, this is 90 degrees, that means this whole thing here is also 90 degrees, because 180, minus this angle here, 90 degrees, is 90. Here we have 90 for the whole thing. And you can see from the graph, from the drawing, 90 is made up by 1x and 2x and another 2x, which is 5x. Solving the algebra, you would end up with x equals 90 divided by 5. So, 90 equals 5x and x equals to 18 and it's looking for 3x so 3x equals to 18 times 3 that gets you 54 so 
that's the answer. We'll do one more here. In the figure above, you have three lines crossing each other. What's the which of the following must be equivalent to Z? You're trying to find what this value is. And when you have lines that cross a point, it's always going to be about vertical, vertical angles, angles across from each other being the same. It's very likely going to be about straight angles, a line, and all the angles adding up to 180. So if this angle here is Z, then this angle here is also Z. And we have a straight line here, X, Y, and Z. That must mean that they add up to 180. So Z is equal to 180. Well, X plus Y plus Z is equal to 180. So Z is equal to 180 minus X minus Y. Or another way to write this is B, 180 minus the angles that you have here, x plus y. You can change that to minus x minus y. All right, here, move on to triangles. And there are more triangles and, again, terms, likely terms that you need to just know. Equilateral means there are three sides are, that are the same. It also means there are three angles that are the same. Obtuse angles, angles that are bigger than, 180, uh, bigger than 90 degrees, will not happen in a equilateral triangle because they're all 60, 60, 60. So there are no obtuse angles and there, there can never be any obtuse angle and there's always three acute angles. With an isosceles triangle, isosceles means two sides being the same. In this case, this side and this side are the same. You would have two equal sides. You have two equal angles and you can have no obtuse angles like the drawing here. You can also have one obtuse angle. It's going to look like something like, like that. Okay, imagine this side and this side are the same. It's going to open up wide and these two angles are very small. So you can have no obtuse angles. You can also have like this one. You can also have one obtuse angle like this one. So that means when you have no obtuse angle like this one, you will have three acute angles, three angles less than 90. If you have this big one here, then you have two angles that are less than 90. Angle here and angle here. Scalene, it's a difficult looking word, but scalene just means that the three angles are different. So if you have a scalene triangle, that means the sides must be all different and the angles must all be different. You can also have zero or one obtuse angle. You cannot have two obtuse, obtuse angles because that would mean the angles in a triangle add up to more than 180 and the angles add up to 180 in a triangle. You can have two or three acute angles, just like an isosceles triangle. Pythagoras theorem, you probably learned that in middle school. It's that ax plus b squared up uh, ax plus a, a squared plus b squared plus uh, equals c squared <laughs> equation. So this is if this side is C, then C is equal to, one way to write it is this, or if you want to square this, then C squared is equal to this without the square root sign. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Let's do a few practice questions here. Car A and car B both leave from the same location at the same time. It's easy to draw out so you can see how it looks like. So they all leave from the same location. Let's draw a point. Car A travels due east. So car A travels in this direction at a constant rate of 50 kilometers per hour. Car B travels south going this way at a rate of 120 kilometers per hour. It's easier to draw to visualize things like in this case, for the faster car, draw it with a longer line, and for the, the slower car, draw it with a shorter line. That way it's easier to, to picture how after one hour, this car is going to travel this far, while this car is going to travel farther because it's faster, it's going to travel this far. What is the distance in kilometers between the two cars after, hey, after one hour? So after one hour, this direction will be 50 kilometers, and this direction will be 120 kilometers, and you're looking for how far this distance is. And we can use the calculator, we can use the Pythagoras theorem. The Pythagoras theorem is 50 squared plus 120 squared. This squared plus this squared is equal to this squared. This is what you're looking for. 
and this site now is 169 uh, 16,900 and we're trying to find this exactly this is now this size square so I want to square root this square root of that that gets me 130 so I know that this side here is 130 kilometers after one hour if it's two hours then you multiply this by two multiply this by two and you find the third side okay we will move on to similar and congruent triangles I'll have you do those practice questions by yourself for similar and congruent triangles similar means two triangles having the same proportion but they are a different size whereas con congruent and congruent triangles means they are identical so if you have two triangles like this uh, you would solve similar triangles because they are proportional to each other you would use use ratio ratio means like for example C to B is equal to F to E and when I said two I mean like fraction so C over B equals F over E or A over B equals D over E and so on and if it's if they are congruent then that means C equals F A equals D B equals E and so on. Now let's take a look at these questions. Sum of all interior angles in a triangle. Inside a triangle you have angles A, B, and C and when you have a triangle the angles add up to 180 so they are the same. The angles in a triangle add up to 180. Sum of any two sides in a triangle like this side and this side or this side and this side and so on with relation to the third side of a triangle. When you have a triangle, then the sum of any two sides has to be bigger than the third side. Otherwise, if these two sides are smaller than this line, then you're going to end up with uh, like an incomplete triangle. You can try that with like sticks. If you have uh, two really short sticks and a really, really long stick, then you can't form them into a triangle that uh, the edges of the sticks touch each other. The obtuse angle in a triangle, obtuse angle is the one that's bigger than uh, 90 degrees, and some of the other two angles in a triangle. If you have a triangle and the angles are 180 degrees in total, and the obtuse angle is, say if this angle here is bigger than 90 degrees, then that means you're left with 180 minus an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees then if this angle here is 90 degrees then these two angles will be exactly 90 add up to exactly 90 but now if this one is bigger than 90 this one's taking more angle away from these two so you're going to end up with an angle that is angle that's less than 90 degrees so the sum of the other two angles then will be smaller than the obtuse angle itself. So the answer here is A. A is also bigger. An exterior angle of a triangle. Exterior angle is the angle that's on the outside. So if I have a line here, then the exterior angle would be this angle here on the outside. Versus sum of the two opposite interior angles, meaning this angle, the blue angle here. And comparing that with angles B and C. Uh, in math you probably learned it if not then I'll just tell you the answer that this angle these two angles will add up to exactly this angle here so they are equal to each other all right these practice questions we will do the first two and I'll have you do the rest yeah in the figure above the side with length C this side is the longest side of the triangle this is the longest side if B is 6, so label 6 for B, and C is 13, so label 13 for C. What is one possible integer value for 6? What uh, for, for A? What can A be? And before we talked about if you have a triangle, then the sum of any two sides, so adding these two up, will be less than 
uh, will be greater than the third side of the the triangle. Uh, similarly, if I add a and b up, I should be I should get a number bigger than c. If I add uh, a and c up, I should get a number bigger than b, and so on. Now, if you're adding these two angles up to get a angle, um, and it says c is the longest side of the triangle. This is the longest side. So as long as you add these two angles up and the number is bigger than this, you're good. So I could have, for example, 8. 8 plus 6 is 14. That's bigger than 13. Uh, 7 would be wrong, but A would be right. So I can have 8. I could have 9. I could have 10. I guess the question is how much, how high can this be? And can this be 18? Because 6 plus 13 is 19, and 19 is bigger than 18. The answer is you cannot because it tells you in the question, C is the longest side. So that means this side cannot be bigger than 13. So I can have like 11, I can have 12, but 13 and upwards would be wrong because assuming that longest side means it's longest than all the other ones, not um, having A and C being the same length. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they're all correct. This question here in the figure above, line L is parallel to line M, so these two are parallel. If X is 40, label 40 right away, what is the measure of DEF? And you're finding this angle here. These graphical questions can be difficult on for, at first glance because oftentimes you'll see drawings that you've never seen before. But as long as you remember the different properties for triangles and for triangles, for angles, for like circles and different shapes, these questions shouldn't be too easy. Uh, shouldn't be <laughs> these questions shouldn't be too hard. Now let's take a look at the question. It says, you're trying to find this angle here. And you're not given a lot, but you're told that this angle here is x, and this angle here is x, which is 40. So I can also label this angle here as 40 because x is just 40. Always think back to the few, kind, the few different kinds of uh, angles that we talked about earlier in here. There are corresponding angles, alternate angles, so the F shape, the Z shape, the C shape, the X shape crossing each other, and alternate exterior having two parallel lines and on the outside. So this, having whenever whenever you have two parallel lines, and it's likely that it's going to be something about this table here. And giving this question a little bit more thought, you realize that you have, um, you're trying to find this angle, you're trying to find, uh, you know, this angle, and you have a straight line here, which is a straight angle, it looks convenient that if you know, somehow know the angle for this, then you're all set because you have this plus this plus this equals a straight line, a straight angle, adding up to one, 180 degrees. So this line and this line being parallel, here we have, do you see? We have a Z shape here. The, the Z shape here means they're alternating interior angles. So that means this angle here being 40 this angle here is also 40. So 40 plus 40 plus another angle equals 180. And this angle, if you do the math, you're going to get 100 degrees. OK, because of time, I'm going to let you do the rest by yourself. Afterwards, go over them with your classmate, with the teacher, and then do the classwork and homework practice here. And let us know if you have questions. See you in the next math point.